main issue, which is just budget updates and where we are in conversations. Anybody have any feedback from last night? I was going to say we should do a debrief. Yeah, a little bit. But anybody, anybody hearing comments back or? No comments. No. Uh, that could be a good thing. It's not all bad. Um, I think, go ahead, Julie. I heard uh, lots of positive comments. I saw some teachers today who were watching at home who um, appreciated the, com how the complexity of answering the questions and the challenge in answering the questions, um, but also, you know, really appreciated the collaboration and um, thought that that came off very clearly that we've been working together and what a difference it is from things they had experienced in the past. Mm -hmm. um, so that was some feedback that I got as I was in the high school and at Wentworth this morning. And then when I woke up this morning, I had all kinds of <laughs> ideas of just little things that I was thinking about. Mm -hmm. um, and so I kind of went through from the beginning of the meeting through to the end of the meeting um, that I thought could just be little enhancements because I felt like I wasn't really able to productively contribute as we were talking about it this year, having not seen it before. Um, and so, but I thought just even having somebody at the door greeting attendees as they come in and just like shaking their hands and things like that. I know Tom and I did that a little bit. Um, but then at the, at the table, uh, um, if we had a sign-in sheet, well, more pens and pencils, of course, that's an easy one, but... It's good, because um, we had a high turnout. <laughs> more agendas, that would be another piece, but um, I thought if folks signed in and they wanted to either put their address or their email, then Tom and I could write, like, a nice thank you letter to yeah. them or email to them. Um, and it would be interesting, too, if that we added a column just like number of years you've been a resident in Scarborough. It's kind of a data well, point so for us to, to have. Um, and then also at the end, I thought it would have been nice if we collected some feedback from folks while they were there or if we had their email address. Like an exit like survey. An exit, you know, we we could, talked about that at two meetings ago. I have on my notes, exit survey, question mark. So I think oh. we had discussed it and then we hadn't kind of set up a follow through with it. Yeah. 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 Okay. So again, if, if people were signing in, we could either send it to them or we could yeah, just, you know, make some time so that they did it before they left. Um, and then, I don't know if we did this or not, because I feel like I, I'm not really quite sure what we did. I was so nervous. Um, <laughs> but did we introduce ourselves as the panelists? So I thought that might be nice. No, yeah. Just, yeah. To just yeah. say who's sitting up here in front of you. Who are we and what is our function? Yeah, what is our role? Um, yeah. to, and make it just personal, too. It could be like something about your service or how long you've been in the district or in the community. Um, and then, um, sorry, it's kind of a long list. I was very busy thinking. <laughs> uh, three more things. Um, just thanking the people who helped contribute to the setup and the development of the, the whole planning, because I was thinking about, you know, all the folks that went down last week just to make sure it was going to be smooth, and then the IT people, community service, um, and acknowledging maybe the town counselors and the school board members who were there. Um, even if it was just, you know, your town council members out here, or even by name, having them stand up so folks could just put faces to names and really using it as an opportunity to connect with our community in that way. Um, and we also had lots of staff who were there, so I thought that would have been nice to acknowledge that they were there as well. So that's my thank you bullet. Um, and then... We had we had 30 questions and you had 48. Um, and I know um, then there was also questions in the audience. So I thought that was really great that we focused on the questions in the audience for the folks who were there. But then it, I thought it might be interesting um, to say if each panelist had like a question that was submitted that they thought was really important that you know we answered. So we kind of would have like Tom's pick, Julie's mm -hmm. pick, you know Jody's pick, Peter's pick. Um, that could just be another way to kind of go at the questions because there's so many of them and you know you can't get to all of them. It's just another idea that I have. And the last thing that I was thinking about was the question about, you know, <laughs> the questions about how can we communicate better, um, which I know sometimes can feel frustrating because we all are working really, really hard on that piece of it. 
But I was just imagining if on the budget portal we had like a table and maybe um, it could look a bunch of different ways, but we could have like town, school, municipal maybe, or think about what that would look like. But maybe we would kind of differentiate the types of communication by, if you're looking for the big picture view, here's these items, you know, broken down by like town, school, collective. If you're looking for written detail, you know, you could access this memo, you could access the budget book, you could access whatever. If you're looking for line item details, like these are the places you would look. And then maybe if you prefer to listen or watch, like here's the video link. I don't know if that would be helpful in navigating the all the information that we already have there or not, but I felt like um we talked early on about the way that the portal was set up and we needed to change it up so we could archive the older stuff and then have the newer stuff up front. But I do think that it needs some organizing because the way that it's set up now is sort of like a news feed. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so whatever the newest thing that we post is on the top and then you have to sort of figure out which little story bullet it is that contains the information you're looking for. So Juliet and I and have talked a couple weeks ago about trying to connect with Sean and Sean Bushway and mm -hmm. maybe come up with a different format, but of course everything else has sort of taken us off in different directions. But I think it, it does bear some looking at to organize it so that we, we keep telling people, hey, go look here, this is where you can find the stuff, but if we could make it more accessible once they get there, it would be great. Yeah, and I was, I was just thinking about the different ways that people learn and the ways that people are comfortable. Like some people would love to come to a big budget forum or to a, a, a meeting like this. Others would be horrified by that, but they still want the information. So kind of just thinking about like the different ways that people like to get information and organizing it that way, even if there were some redundancies. And then um, at the meeting, Kevin said, oh, there's all these people here from the town, you know, elected officials, but maybe not everybody would know who those folks are. So I was thinking it would have been great if he'd have had everybody yeah. sort of stand up, even if they're not introduced, and say, yeah. you know, you got a question, talk to one of these folks. Well, and it, it kind of goes to what he said at the end, which I thought was great. It's like, here we all are in the same room with you. If you guys have questions, go tackle somebody. And yeah. you know, we had some neat conversations afterwards. Mm -hmm. uh, there were a couple of people who came up and engaged in conversation with mm -hmm. whoever happened to be standing around me. And I felt like we had some really great opportunities beyond the formal event. So if people did know, you know, you're the guy I need to talk to about X, then that could be a little bit more targeted and maybe there could be actual more um, planned time set aside for something informal like that. Because that goes to the whole dialogue piece. Yeah. Could it not be actually informal but be planned and be strategic? So the budget form, the format that we have currently ends at 8.30 yeah. and then From staff goes to tables that have already been set up yeah. and there's like, there's a debt station, there's an assessing station, there's a school you know, activities, like, like we could decide who's going to be the expert on the different categories that we really see as being um, most common, and then staff can kind of go to their places to be supportive about those specific topics, and then people kind of know where to go. It's too bad because we could have done one for the public safety building or something. Right. You know? Like, I think that that would be a way to make it, I think that people feel uncertain about just simply approaching somebody. Not everyone. There are definitely people that are very comfortable with that, but for those that do did have questions but wouldn't know where to go, maybe that would solve that, that challenge. Well, and the private, one on, not private, but a one-on-one -on -one conversation serves a different purpose for, for the citizens than handing in a question, hearing it answered publicly. They're both valuable and they're both, they both serve a great purpose, but they're different. I almost wonder if there's a challenge with that because with a meeting starting at 7 and running until 8.30, at 8.30 a lot of people you know, they have to walk away. It might be like, you know what, I got to get home, you know, it's whatever, I've got to get up early for work, but maybe if you started at 6 or 6.30 yep. and ran till 8.30. I just think that people at 8.30 were, like, there were quite a few people. You know, I mean, there were some that did mill around, but what I'm saying is if you wanted to you still have more. engagement mm -hmm. at various tables, I think that a better bet might be to have it be a little bit earlier or on the you know, so so starting it earlier, meaning start the event earlier, not have the tables earlier. But then you could run that from say eight to eight thirty people are you know, they two and a half hours. You know, I mean a lot of people say, Oh, I've only got an hour. Right. 
or I've got an hour and a half, or I got a whatever. Mm -hmm. So just a thought. Yeah, and I think it was Larissa from your one-on-one -on -one conversations, or maybe it was in the survey where folks had said when it's at night, a lot of folks don't drive at night. Mm -hmm. And so I was really surprised at how many people were there last night, given that it was rainy and cold for two days. And, um, but maybe if we did something on a, on a Saturday morning or afternoon, I don't know if that helps, then maybe it would be more conducive to that kind of like mixing and mingling or breakout tables. I mean, what we can do is you know, those are all great suggestions. Maybe anybody else can just email us, and we'll try to assemble it so it's there for next year. So when you I yeah, I think, you know, set I it up next year, you'll have something to look back on. Look back on. Okay. We'll, I'll, I'll encapsulate these in minutes so we can, because we, we struggled this year saying, well, what worked last year, what didn't. This is really helps. But I think the the other item, and I don't know what, where we want to spend our time today, I think you know, we really wanted to talk about the budget, where we are, what we need to do. I don't know if we want to talk about, we didn't go into a lot of detail last night about the changes that, that have been put on the mm -hmm. table, both, both Tom and Julie have been working, whether that's helpful just to kind of quickly itemize for us, how yes, you guys no, kind of got to the to. Sure. you did. And just, uh, I want to make a final comment on the forum. Um, having participated since the beginning, the one thing I noticed last night that was larger change this year than any previous year is there's clearly an evolution in kind of the knowledge and interest level of looking at the, the type of questions and I'm not so sure the, the format that we're using is the best way to convey um, some fairly detailed information and I, I know for at least for me I didn't feel as though I was able to really kind of fully answer the question really because they're quite thoughtful and deep and require a Reciprocal response. We really need a chart or a graph or a so well, we'll we'll do that through the written responses. Hopefully, people you know, review them. But uh, that format, I think, if this trend continues, it's going to continue to be challenging. If those questions aren't kind of very specific to the budget request, this you know kind of factual answers, they're more almost philosophical or larger in nature, and frank, frankly, are beyond any one of us. They're, or conversations that this group will likely to have over the next several months. So I felt that I, I felt the same way. I thought the questions from two years ago were very sort of budget centric. Yeah. And then this year the questions had a different feel. And that's probably going to continue. So I, I just throw that out there that mm -hmm. the format is will be limiting in terms of how well we can respond uh, substantively. But Tom, if we were to give them a format to have those philosophical conversations prior to budget season, like, it would, there, would that, it, would it be allow the forum to become back to the kind of that symbol mm -hmm. of the past? Like, if there was a fall forum that was more about the philosophy of government, like, the questions last night were more about philosophy of government and role of government. Okay. Like, I wonder if, if there was another it's platform, possible. would they be willing to split those out? It's possible. Another way you could sort of parse that in, in sense of timing would be to, if you're keeping the same structure, perhaps you could allow questions to come in earlier. Now, this year, of course, we did, and they didn't come. But right. um, if there were questions that required a lot of research or follow-up or you know more structured feedback, and we knew that, say, three weeks before the forum, perhaps we could have a printed document that would have some of those charts and graphs and. Um, or and that would, be a, that would be available so I, I at don't the time have the answer. people came so together. That, that was my <coughs> feeling last night. Yeah. And I do want to compliment Jody and Peter. I thought more than any past year, and this is no criticism on past finance chairs, but... Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, is there one here? Right? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, well, well, <laughs> but it, may be, <laughs> it may be semantics or... Yeah, yeah, be but yeah. having them stand... Kind of co equals and kind of share uh, back and forth. I think that just kind of further what we've been talking about and trying to model. So, good job. And Kevin didn't. So, you set the stage for them. You did. It's not even going there. <laughs> so, here, let's start shoulder. this around. How many, members of the, how many members of the public were there? 32. 32. Oh, I was 30. 48. No, I was counting if you took out staff and spouses of staff, we decided to make well a I'm sorry, we actually, your spouse is the one that caught
caused the discussion to happen. <laughs> 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 the discussion of Scarborough. I beg staff different. decided that the, the spouses were there in spousal support roles more than citizen roles. But she's also staff, so there was a kind of a double yeah, issue. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. An employee. Nope. All I care about is anybody win wager or is everybody else? Everyone did too low. Everybody did too low. Everybody did too low. Oh, the rest of the staff <laughs> <has> got <laughs> knocked out. Throw the challenge flag on the statistical analysis. That's all. <laughs> all right, so As the engineer on column five. Yeah. Oh, and, and you get a yellow card. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, throw me the yellow card. Yeah, I mean, there's got to be a better way because there was a lot of officials just sitting there doing nothing for two hours, and that just that's not a very productive use of their time. I mean, absolutely nothing. So uh, nice to show support, but but really. I mean, that's, for, for them, it was a waste of time. And uh, so I think you have to really say to yourself, wait a second. And I think that goes to Tom's point. In, the, in years past, we've, we've called upon Jen Lim from the IT department to talk about one-to-one -one computing. Or the can you come up with it's on your In rare occasions, I mean, that was the one. That was the first year. I'm guessing 90% of the questions are probably fielded, certainly at the table and probably 80% by the superintendent and the manager. So, mm -hmm. point's well taken, though, that maybe really? they I mean, I came away, I went home and I said, what did I, what did I take away? I said, well, I took away the fact that the town manager and the superintendent are quick on their feet and articulate and answered questions well. And, and, and I said, didn't, didn't really take away a lot other than that. And I thought they did a good job and that those Peter and, and Sean, the people who otherwise contributed to it, were complimentary. But it didn't have a lot to do with the budget. It was more philosophical. Mm -hmm. yeah. That kind of, I went, whoa. Mm -hmm. It would be helpful to, I, I did grab your slide here. It's the same, it's just yeah. higher level information. I, yeah, I think it would be helpful, yeah. Do you want me to send that around for us? Maybe. Okay. So what's being sent around here is the slide that Jody and Peter used last night that is kind of the, the big picture of uh, the first sheet I handed around um, as kind of a backdrop to this conversation. Uh, Julie and I appreciated that this process continues to move along. We've got some dates that are quickly approaching that uh, we're not going to change and frankly we've got a lot of work to do. So I think the last time this group convened, uh, I suggested we all quickly um, accepted, um, I guess, encouraging Julie and I to put our heads together and come come forward with a bit of proposal. And I was very pleased that Peter and Jody were willing to at least, um, you know, advance that on our behalf last night. I think that was it would have been a shame not to use that opportunity to put it out there. But we appreciate that you might be interested in looking under the hood and understanding kind of how we got to where we are. So the second sheet provides that detail, and it's a lot of the territory that will be familiar to you, I, I suspect. Um, but I can say for my part, and Julie, you can speak for yourself, we offer these up um, feeling very comfortable in terms of revenue estimates um, on the expenditure side. I've been careful that I don't have all the, the detail yet uh, from my staff uh, that we'll be able to do this without reducing levels of service. I think the next round we're going to start to get into that those conversations. Um, and I'll let Julie speak to kind of the big picture of your impact and we can talk about the details um, as you like. Um, yeah, so I think uh, similar to what Tom is saying, what we really tried to do was um, project tighter. So we looked at um, resigning and reducing our salary and benefit pr projections and so that we were able to find some um, dollar amounts there, but we also, what you see is uh, postponing the shift of the capital improvement to operating for the tech refresh, um, so that that's a part of what you see there in terms of the reductions in ex ex expenditures, or I'm sorry, in the increases in the revenues. And then um, we also looked at reducing staff professional development line district-wide. Um, to decline our, to decrease our expenditures and revising the utility projections. So it's really, you know, the bulk of this comes from 
tighter projections. And then looking the MLTI revenue that we're anticipating for the reimbursement of the devices as Jen Lynn presented um, to uh, the, the Town Council Finance Committee at a recent conversation we had. Um, and of course, the, the big, I feel like, gift from the universe for us is our health benefits. So we were projecting our Anthem premiums to be at 5.5% and they came in at 1.21%. Our Delta was um, projected to be at 3% and that also came in at 1.2%. Um, so that in and of itself totals 251,000 of this 871,000 that you're seeing here um, at the bottom. So I feel really comfortable where we are. I think it's important to note that tighter projections means less fund balance at the end of the year. Um, but given the, the curtailment that has been that Tom and I both put in place as of Tuesday um, with our staff at curtailing all non-essential spending in this current budget year, I'm hoping that'll allow us to keep a healthy fund balance um, as we go as we start planning for FY19. Can I add one item, really, that you might want to speak to is um, that we did take a look at the new investment proposals, and while there was a sense that pretty much everything we put on the table there with the reallocations was um, strategically valuable, um, we did take off one of those proposed, uh, the 0.5 FTE for the athletic trainer position being increased. That's a piece of that larger school refined salary and benefits number that you see on uh, the, the full municipal sheet. Yes, thanks for adding that. And then just simply on the town side, excise tax, this is something we flagged at the front end of this. Uh, we continue to trend well. Uh, this, this estimate for another $200,000 will actually be exceeding that in the current year. Um, I'm comfortable bringing that forward to you. The Homestead Adjustments, uh, Homestead Exemptions Adjustments uh, really recognizes what current state law is. It's 62.5% rather than 50% um, out of the gate. The proposed budget was at 50%. So borrowing a change through this legislative process, um, that should be good revenue as well. So we're I'm equally confident in bringing that to you. Uh, and then as Julie mentioned, and this is a point of some discussion around this table, I'm sure, is um, our initial int uh, intent was to fund more capital using appropriations, and the question is whether this is the year to, to make that shift. I think, to a person, we all agree that that's where we need to get to. It's a matter of when can we do it. Can we shoulder it uh, in the same year that we've got some other challenges? So, so what types of things did you shift over from appropriations? So Ruth does have a detailed list if you want to see it. Um, we try to be thoughtful and careful uh, in terms of what those items are. There, are, there was an infield drag rake, I'm not sure what that is, um, some police thermal imaging cameras, some traffic monitoring cameras, heavy truck lifts for public works, uh, there's a fairly hefty furnishings replacement and renew for the school department, individually probably not, but they're kind of like the laptops, you know, when you bulk them together, they're bondable and some pickup trucks, pickup trucks and box trucks. So all of those total together equal to 298, and then we broke it out between how much was school and how much was allocated to the town. No, keep in mind, we would be very careful and thoughtful about how long we finance all those items. The ones probably less than are, five years They'd probably be all of bearing length. They would never exceed the expected useful life of the item. So though they're financed, it could be as for years, frankly, depending on the item. It could be 10 years in other cases. Not, un not, not unlike the way we've traditionally done it, frankly. Um, again, it's not exactly what we, the way we want to do it, but it's just needed to, to make that conversion. We have not touched food service. I think it's been a very clear um, objective from this group that we'd like to preserve that, so we respect that and, and have it. Uh, so the end result, which is about... $1.55 million left to the taxpayers, and that produces the expected tax rate increase uh, between 3.25 and about 4.5%. But if you take sort of that middle value, whatever, it's about a 4%. Yeah. 
I mean, the middle point is 3.9, but uh, again, I, I'm, I'm using the range because that's the yep. council yeah. policy. And the reverse side, I think, shows some of that. Yeah, thank you, Ruth. On the, on the back side, uh, the green is a gotcha. modified uh, tax computation page. You'll see the, how that falls out. Ruth, do you want to speak to how that's constructed? Because it's, it's, it's a little. If I was grab some different values, just I want to make sure people understand what it is and why we did it this way. So the white section is what was proposed in uh, the manager's budget, and then the first green column shows what the new values for 2018 would be with the million five adjustment, and then the net inc uh, the net appropriation for each of those same sections, and then the third column which is kind of different is the percentages, but I wanted to show what the two, th that those percentages are normally a comparison of 2017 to 18. So those percentages are based on what the 2017 budget is with these new numbers. But the last column shows the adjustment between the 2018 proposed and the 2018 current. So there's two different types of Calculations. One is the percentage from last year to this year, or to 17 to 18, and the other one is the $18 difference from the proposed budget to the adjusted budget. So we went from a 7.84% increase on the net budget from the proposed, and now we're looking at a just a over a five and a quarter percent increase from last year to from 17 to 18. Enough, but <laughs> so our goal was to get you get this conversation to a different point. I think we've done that, and I think we offered up with good faith and conscience that uh, it's doable. That it's uh, it really kind of embraces all the sorts of things that have been talked about about um, refining our projections and really being very careful about um, what we need to run our operations, but stopping just short of cutting into operations. And so if I, Tom, I know you and I talked a little bit about yesterday, but so if, if we take that mid-range, which is probably historically that's sort of where the, the property's value assessment shakes out, as I said, that's about 3.9%. To get it to 35 it would be another 275000 adjustment, something like that. Approximately. That's, say, that's right over magnitude. We can be more precise yeah. with that if you like. And then to get to three-ish, it be, you know, more in the magnitude of 550,000 or something like that. Um, so I, I don't know how, how folks are feeling. I mean, um, I know just personally, I've gotten a lot of emails this year, more than in the past, and, and from different, and I'm sure everybody else has seen them. Um, a lot of people looking for that, you know, that three-plus quarter. Does everybody, is everybody comfortable with where we are? Do you think we need to be someplace different? I guess would be the question for everybody around the table. Um, there's some tough choices from, you know, I think Tom and, and Julia, but you guys are saying this is, you're comfortable with this, this really doesn't impact services particularly. I mean, there's some pain points, but I think the last time we had talked anything beyond here, there's trade-offs and, and consequences to decisions and it's just something you know, I think our goal is our goal is to try to get this passed the first time through. I think that's healthy for the community and the right thing to do. So just trying to get everybody's sense of are we good or do, do we need to have more? Um, and just whatever people think, maybe just whoever wants to. I'll go first. That's Put fine. the toes in the water. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I had a bunch of questions for today that we've actually pretty much addressed through the, the, the management superintendent's report. Mm. Um, are we going to agree that the mid-range is what we're going to use for projections of revenue or, or uh, assessed value? I'm well, it's more no, for the no. council. I, I mean, then, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm comfortable either way, but I'm, I'm kind of looking at, because that's a wide range of yes. tax increase from 3.25 3. to 4.5, it's a 4.6, it's a big range. So if we want to settle in on we're going to use that midpoint, um, I, I'm comfortable with that because it's a three. That's the 3.9 number, the 3.9 projection number. Yep. Yep. You, you follow what I'm saying? Yep. So if we use that midpoint projection number, and we're comfortable with that, 
I'd like to see, and Peter, your question answered that, to get to three and a half would be another 275 reduction. So I look at this a couple of ways. I mean, it's easy for us to sit around the table and go, four is a good compromise, that's great. We'll pass it through the council. Will it pass the vote? Right. And I'm a little probably, I know we're all going to be shocked, but I'm a little pessimistic that that would be the case. I think it's going to be a pretty uphill battle if we come out at 4%. It's going to be tough to sell that. I think three and a half is something that I could be comfortable with, you know, and really kind of sit down and justify the fact that considering what's happened and where we're at and all the things that have happened so far, we're not increasing any investments this year. We're fixing out a CIP, but three and a half is a reasonable expectation. It still gets us looking at your 10-year trend of tax rates, which I thought was a great chart last night. It still gets us down, you know, in a reasonable, respectable area, and I think that's a good chance, a better chance to pass. One thing I do want to bring up is that once, whatever we put through and whatever we pass, if it doesn't pass in June, the municipal budget's closed. We're done. So, you know, if there are reductions that need to be made, how are we going to address that? Because if we're at four, we put it out there at four, and that's what we're comfortable with, and that's the consensus. And I'll support that if that's what the consensus is. And it fails. Where do we go from there? Puts all the pressure on the school. It really does. It really does. So I think that, in my personal opinion, to get us to the place where it goes the first time and goes well, I'd love to see, I hate to say it, but tighten those screws just a little bit more to get us to that 3.5% in the mid-range and hear what the repercussions of that might be. And that might be part of the justification for not going there. But I at least would like to see those numbers and hear what staff thinks would be impacted by doing that. Because I think, personally, I think that's going to be our best chance to get it on the first go-around. I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. But hope and faith in no means of a good strategy. I don't know where I've heard that before. It's from the other four budget teams, I think. Perhaps. Yeah. So that's where I am. Yeah. I think that's where I think I'm kind of, kind yeah. of right with you. Um, um, as far as um, the outlook that Chris just gave, I think is absolutely correct. Um, I'm reserved at this time to say where I want to be because we have not reviewed a couple of budgets on the town side, and particularly, I, I, Tom's going to uh, cringe down there, but I've said for years, community services is an is a, is a enterprise account, enterprise budget consumer driven, there might be revenue opportunities within that budget. People disagree with me. I've been fighting this argument for 15 years. Um, but the fact is that that is a uh, cash driver. You can get more revenues out of that. Um, so I, I want to kind of hear the story again this year to see where we are before that. Um, uh, and I apologize because this is only the first meeting I'd be able to m make, maybe the second. Um, I'm not fully subscribed to the fact that from a policy basis that we need to continue or that we need to change policy this year to include food services in the budget and to fund that through the tax base when we've been successful in the past. I agree with and complement the goal that we've tried to set with that. This just is not the year, I think, to do it. It will still get funded. It just gets funded out of general fund balance um, at the end of the year, so it's not a decrease in any services whatsoever. It's just a change of policy, and I'm just not sold into keeping that in there because it's something that's uh, substantive. I did run the numbers, by the way. A $275,000 reduction would actually bring us on a range of 2.76 to 4.08. The mid would be 3.45, and that's with 275. Okay. So, I'm, brings you about 3, 3 points. Yeah. yeah, so I'm still kind of open because I, the big piece, for me, the big piece is um, I need to see the community services budget and particularly the revenue projections. When is that? Monday night. But, but putting that so so putting that aside for a second, are you more? Do you think the three and a half is is a, a target that we should one way or the other think about getting? As Chris suggested, or are you kind of well, not sure? I'm not so personally. I'm not sure. Um, and, and the reason is because I want to understand that um, it depends on where you're going to come up with. Well, right. Well, so are you thinking you so. can increase revenues enough Maybe. that you might not have to make other just other choices cool. to offset and, and the downside on the community <coughs> services budget, which I recognize, is that when you increase pricing, you can sometimes cause them to decrease in the demand. 
But Although this community has never seen a decrease in demand but, in community services. But there's also scholarshiping and all kinds of things that they avail to mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So if they went up five dollars or whatever it might be for soccer, you know, yeah. am I as a parent crying because it went up five dollars? Probably not. You've got five hundred kids doing it five dollars. You know, it I mean it was a little bit of something. Yeah, so the past history about this, just to give a kind of a high-level overview, has been is that um, because community services take care of um, hard assets that are shared, there's always been a belief that a portion of that cost should be um, shared in the tax base and not necessarily paid for by consumer pricing, you know, the, the fees. So the field maintenance, um, and I, other than just generalizing that one area, that's kind of where, over the last 15 years, the conversation, and by the way, 15 years ago, uh, community services was, what, probably 50% funded by tax base, and so they're very, they've done an extremely good job in getting closer to 100%. I think they're at about 86. 86, I was going to say 90, but. Yeah, the final 14% are stranded costs. They're wrapped right. up in this building, this municipal building, yeah. and its operations fall under community services and grounds maintenance. And keep in mind, the quid pro quo is that we get use of courts and fields in right. exchange for maintenance. So there is a that's the shared relationship. We do get something in return. We didn't have that. Arguably, we have to build and or rent our uh, you know, facility somewhere or run our programming. So the final two hundred, that final fourteen sixty percent is stranded in my view, and will be very difficult. It's not impossible to ever close that gap. But you've heard me say that before. So I, and I'm smiling because I'll keep saying what I say too. <laughs> <laughs> but Peter, to your point, so um, I'm right, Sean, do, do I want to see the? <laughs> <laughs> I'm right, and you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll keep saying that. <laughs> <laughs> Nick's all part of the humor. Yeah. Exactly. This is the humorous part. Um, so um, what I heard today was that we, there was a request for managers to go back and uh, sharpen that pencil again. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to see what that is. Um, as well as the council's finance committee needs to sharpen its pencil with, uh, yeah. you can't sharpen a pen, but you can sharpen, you know, with, particularly with community services. Yeah. And if there's other mm -hmm. programs, so as an example, maybe this, this is not the year to increase the senior tax. I mean, that's a, there is an opportunity to just flat fund that. I don't know if I want to do that, but, I mean, there's, there's little pieces that I, I kind of need to well, let, but, me, but let me ask just a couple of questions so I can understand what the playing field looks like. What is the what's the differential if we did not fully fund the lunch program? The amount that is budgeted as tax revenue is two hundred thousand. And what would it historically be if we hadn't changed the policy to um, it's varied considerably, but it's never really been more than about seventy five thousand dollars. So budget. roughly one hundred twenty five thousand there? Yeah. We had twenty five thousand dollars in this year's budget. But the rest has always come out of fund balance. Okay, so that's not an insubstantial amount. No. And how much do we have left over in senior property tax relief uh, reserve fund? Yeah. It escapes the base. I thought we used 30, 30 or 40,000. 30 or 40,000. Left from this year? Oh, yeah. I thought it all happened this year. Oh, it, oh, sorry, whatever it hasn't been used in prior years, it, it, well, Ed Blaze was the one who said, let's set it aside. Yeah. And we did. And last year we funded it at 70. Five thousand right. and, and spent one hundred and thirty, but we okay. had that reserve. Had little, yeah, so now we still have thirty. Still have fund balance. Thirty or check. Thirty or thirty. Yeah, thirty we'll check it. I don't really remember what the exact amount was. Ballpark though is. I think twenty or thirty, maybe. Twenty thirty. So. But we did increase the budget this year. Next. So year. we have one hundred and thirty back in, which is the traditional number. So there's there's maybe yeah. thirty thousand. I'm I'm really 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 uncomfortable touching senior. Mm -hmm senior tax money at this point because I think what we're seeing what we're um, seeing limited on a line item basis uh, what, sure if, what, if, what if we, we have between the reserve account and and the, say a hundred thousand instead of 130 that comes up to 130 total and the and the right. demand is 140 yeah. I, yeah. Right. So are we the standing directive is if uh, we will meet demand if budget doesn't exist, we have the authority to dip into the reserve account. If sufficient reserves don't exist, then, right. then, then right. you've done that. You're out of luck. Right. You wouldn't right. So, so my, my concern. So you can't play that too close to the vest. Yeah. No. And my, my, my concern is that it's a double it's a double offset, right? That's that to me is one of the positive things about 
making an argument for increasing school funding is that for those people who really have, are really truly struggling to support that, we have a mechanism in place to allow that to happen. And I think that's fair. Um, I, I would be very cautious to offset that, well, that yeah, piece you're, with your plan is more, more dangerous. And, that, and I wasn't that. suggesting that we, that no, 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 we do that. I just, um, no, I'm, gonna, just I'm gonna rely on Tom to, to look at that and then make the I just needed to know where, where, where some of the push could be <coughs> so that uh, so that, because my sense is similar to all three of you, is to get south of 3.5 gives us a dramatically better chance of Oak First, and and I would be very comfortable having the two senior administrators, superintendent and the town manager, confer on the best ways to do that to yeah, make I, recommendations I mean, yeah. to the school board and the town. Yeah, council. yeah, and I think I think your suggestion was great, if, if, but I, I just wanted to hear from everybody that that is a reasonable target. And I, and I think we've kind of weighed in, so I don't know. I think uh, for, for me, with, with Sean's comment about um, the nutrition program, it's, I'm sort of feeling like we're, we're double taking in that we've asked the superintendent to really tighten up along the way so there's going to be less fund balance at the end, whereas no, that's normally where we would cover mm -hmm. um, Right. You're, absolutely, you're absolutely right. You're, <laughs> you're that deficit. We so all know 2019 is not going to be a great and year. Yeah, we're going to and that's a fund balance matter. Right. And you're correct that we're taking away from fund balance money. Right. But yeah. my concern is that if it doesn't pass, no matter what we've got in fund balance, we've got to take it somewhere from, now we've got to take it from the operational budget on the school side somewhere. And it's yeah. bird in the hand right. is what well. convinces me. I'd rather get passed with the first. Right. This time, but and, there's no and, face, guarantees. and face the music that we w because we haven't taken into account the chance that the legislature will override a veto because they put money into the school budget that actually improves on these numbers mm -hmm. uh, for us. But maybe as a process, though, I think all we're trying to do is is that the right bogey that we should direct you know Tom and Julie to kind of work toward? I think or is we're within shouting distance of the commitment we've all, as town councilors, made to each other and to the public that we're trying to do around 3% or less. And getting a penny below 3.5 to me would be close enough for government work. <laughs> yeah, right. So we're, that's, yeah. And personally, I would prefer you just giving us a number and letting us figure out how we calculate yeah. Yeah. that because yeah. Um, I appreciate that. It okay. really changes the way I'm thinking if we're not funding food service. Yeah. Yeah. So I would be I would be cutting in other areas than what I've proposed right here. I think one of the issues that we face on the school side is that we have switched up the schedule a little bit so that we have our second reading tonight. Yeah. Um, we're supposed to procedurally hand off the school budget as sort of a done deal to the municipality so that you guys can incorporate it into your proceedings going forward. That's not to say that we haven't traditionally gone back and tweaked those numbers and changed them at the end of the day. Or refused them entirely. Or refused them entirely. Um, that must have been you, Chris. I just um, but I guess my, my point is that um, we are going to be voting on something tonight, okay. and that isn't to say that it's still not a work in progress. So I guess my point is that <coughs> procedurally we're moving forward as a school budget document or a, a bottom line number, but that doesn't mean that we're closing the door on it. We have to get through the rest of your process, we have to get through referendum, we have to revisit everything. So, And to that point, my understanding is that tonight we will be voting on this most re these most recent numbers. That's the way that we were looking at it until this conversation, conversation but were, until this group were, were able to meet. Everyone to appreciate Julie's comment just a moment ago. Yep. That if food service is part of the equation, I don't think she's comfortable, what I heard, putting forward these cuts. Her proposal would be different. Right. And so, uh, if, you, if we have any hope and expectation that the school board is going to endorse this tonight and incorporate it as part of second reading, I think we need to provide that assurance now that food service is not part of the equation. If not, I don't see how no. they can I, I, comfortably... I, I understand, but I don't necessarily concur with that. And the right. reason I don't concur with that is because the second reading, 
ultimately the finance committee and this council is going to decide what that number is. We can still have these discussions and reduce your budget by a, an agreed to amount after your second reading. Mm -hmm. And you've already got your plan in place now of how you're going to adjust for that. So I appreciate the need to, to, to get to a point, but you know, I, we got to look at what our, what's, our, what's our number one goal here. Our number one goal is to get the budget passed on the first round and take the best chance to do that. Because I, I, you know, and again, like I said before, the consensus is as is right now is good to go. I, I'll support that, but I don't think we're going to be, I, I don't think our chances of success in, in, in June are going to be as good as they could be at three and a half. At three and a half, I think we can all get out there, shout from the rooftops, it's a tough year, we've all done, a, we've all done what we can do and really get out there and advocate behind it. I'm not saying we won't do that at the current budget, but it's a harder sell. We understand our first chance is our best chance, exactly. and we're not. I'm not opposed to three and a half being a reasonable place to get to. I'm just saying if the food service ends up being a pretty important part, yeah, and, agreed. and the sort of collaboration that has been shown, I think more so this year than ever, um, I think it gets very delicate the way you just describe it. But isn't isn't if we have to go from 3.9 to 3.4.9, yeah, Walmart. I mean, I would see food services being an integral part of doing that. Yeah, it's true. It, it's using some fund balance and makes 19 the 2019 budget that much difficult, but you, it's first in the hand. We do it now, and uh, uh, and that's sort of what goes further into what Julie came up with for cuts to get us to 3.9. And on, on looking just on the school side, that, that then it goes a long ways towards the part that would be the school's part of going from 3.9 to 3.9. I think what Julie's saying, and she could say it herself since she's sitting right across from me here, is, <laughs> is that the, some of the projections that we've made in tightening up the salary and benefit lines, um, the utilities lines, and so forth. Those are some of the things that allow us to generate the fund balance, which allows us to pay food service at the end of the year. So the tighter that we get on our guesstimates of what it's going to cost us to run things, the less fund balance we have at the end of the year, and the more important it is to actually have a plan for food service. Mm -hmm. So I think, to her point, if food service is not going to be funded directly, then we have to be more planful about how we budget to create surplus. Quite frankly. Well, and I think a, a point I would also add to that is 200000 doesn't totally cover all of food service costs when you look at it historically over time. So there already is going to be a need for some flexibility. And I just, I worry about us getting um, to a place where we're so limited on, flex and on our, our flexible spending, if you will, in some of these areas. Because even when we're looking at salary and benefits, as I said last night, you know, changes in staff, changes in student needs, those are things we can't predict. And it takes one, you know, student in our district to need an out-of-district placement that would throw us way out of whack if we're, like, so tight down to the penny. <coughs> and honestly, on a budget of our size to have a $300,000, $400,000 fund balance, that's pretty tight budgeting already, and that's what Kate has been doing, you know, for years. And so, also knowing too that we're really draining our fund balance this year by re by you know going in and bringing that 2.1 over into um, offset our revenue losses. So I, I just there's you know there's there's benefits to to doing it multiple different ways. I think that it would I would feel more comfortable making different types of decisions if we we're relying that heavily on fund balance to pay that bill that we know is going to be there at the end of the year because there's all these things we don't know are going to happen. So, so I guess uh, from my again from my perspective, I don't think to a, everybody here realizes the, the the we're not. I don't think we're asking these things as kind of a, a, an off the cuff kind of hey just run this and see what you think. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think what we're trying to do is get to a point where we've got to set a target, we've got to set a goal. That's our responsibility. That's what our role is. Um, how we get there is a number of different ways on how we can get to that. But if that's going to be our goal, the best thing in my mind is to state that goal, mm -hmm. turn it back over to the professionals in town, mm -hmm. and say, please help us understand how you would get to this point. And what are the trade-offs? And what are the trade-offs? Exactly. The, the, the flip side of that is, is and I, I don't think this will happen, but the flip side of that is, we put this budget together, a proposal comes in, and we've seen it happen in the past. A proposal will come in in chambers at the second reading, 
and everybody goes, <gasps> you know, I want to reduce the school budget hundred eight hundred thousand dollars. I don't think it's going to happen, but I, the, the 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 council still has the the opportunity to act on that even after the budget is agreed to. So I, I guess you know we're I think we are all working towards the same goal, and I think I don't think any I certainly don't scrutinize or question. The, the veracity and the validity with which you guys put your right. heads together to come up with this stuff. I know it's not the easiest thing in the world. And I know how she she projects, and I would trust her numbers eight days a week and twice on Sunday. The real question is, is how do we bridge this gap that we've got? How, what's the best, fairest, uh, easiest way, or not easy, there is no easy way. What's the best, fairest way for us to bridge this gap if that's what our goal is? And, you know, I mean, we're getting down to the point where we have second reading tonight in the school board. Okay, um, I, I know that we're up against the deadline. We've got some dates coming. We've got to make decisions in finance right. within the next month, for sure. So we're, we're at the point now where it's like, okay, we've, we've, we've started to, we haven't even nibbled around the edges. We're chewing into the start, we're chewing into the center. We're almost at the center now, and we've got to decide, okay, are we going to take that extra bite, or are we going to take a step back and see what's left? So, I, I mean, at this stage, I guess it's, I understand the, 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 the rationale behind all the decisions that were made. I understand the process of how what was left on the cutting floor already, what hasn't been approached, and why the things are still on the table. I think they're all valid. They're all to a T. Each one of them can be justified and correctly supported and, and, and a, a advocated for. But if our goal, again, is this, we still got to get to this goal, or as close to it as we can. So, so I think I've come to look, I mean, I, I think I think yours is a great suggestion. Let's Asked ask to identify what other items can be considered to get us to the 3.49. Is that your, is that your number? Um, 3.49. And then this group will have to get back together as soon as we can, which is another meeting, which is, we have a schedule issue, so we have to figure that out. Um, and, and then have that conversation about trade offs and <coughs> is it worth it? But I, but I think I concur too that, that we have a better shot at 3.5 than we do. Um, and, and maybe when we see what the items are, it will we'll make decisions, other decisions. But I just want to be clear: the 3.49 or 3.5 that is using the midpoint evaluation. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 yeah, and that's our best yeah. guess. I mean, but we'll still show the range because it can come in. Right. For right. Yeah, I just wondered if that was the upper end of the range. Or Unless we've got, an, I mean, I'm, I just chose that one. I think that's historically what we tend to work with. Or we used last year, at least historically, the one year we did it. Um, <laughs> Yeah, if we want to do it, I'm fine with that too. As long as we're all on the same page, yeah, that's fine. And I think, um, so keep in mind, on May 11th is a joint town council school board workshop on the budget. So um, that's an opportunity for us to delve into any uh, conversation that supports this discussion today. If, if, if we need to, about where that 275 is coming from. Are you looking to make time adjustments? For well, I. Your May 11th is too late. Your two point. Yeah. <laughs> well, two, two weeks. weeks. That was a week before your final vote. But I think the goal, uh, personally, I mean, I think the goal of the 11th is to say, here's where we're at. We're done. We're now we're presenting it as we're all behind this. This is the work we've done. Let's get out there and move this forward and push it. I, I, I that's my approach. I, I think that's how we did it last year. Is we well, all the heavy lifting was done by by that point, and we were all like, okay, here's our budget now. Now yeah. we're going to present it out. We're all going to hit the streets and, and start advocating for this thing. I, it was, I don't think it was more of an, it wasn't a negotiation at that point. But if we're, at, if we're saying that's going to be our next, I'm sorry, you know what, they they oh, yeah, that's the Joint Town Council School <laughs> Budget Workshop. So that's everybody right. on May 10th. And then the 11th, this group right. has a Joint kind of Town back. Council School Board Finance meeting. Well, yeah, I'm just looking yeah. at what I've got on <coughs> yep. lovely Easter egg. Again, I, I mean, I think to me, if, if I, 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 have, I have the utmost confidence the staff is going to come up with a, a they're going to pull a rabbit out of their hat or other areas and, and come up with something that is what we're asking of them. Then the question becomes, is that what we wanted? Are we comfortable with that? So I don't Right, but I mean, I don't know that we want to have that discussion on the 10th as the school council and the school board. Why not? Because then we're still negotiating. Then you we just said we could get on the 6th. So the third is the town council public hearing on the budget. The third. Okay. Yeah, Say it again. I didn't the hear third. 
next it's Wednesday our public hearing. is their yeah. public hearing on the budget. Yeah. So then between then and the 10th is just that week. Which keep in mind, on the 3rd, the majority of this town has no idea that we've already reduced our budget $1.5 million, uh, $1 million right. let alone that we're looking at another 275. So they're looking at it as whatever what are you cutting people are publishing and whatever uh, media that they have. So that's a different dynamic. I think on the 10th, when we have the joint workshop of the council and the school board, it's about getting us on the same page because we're the ones who then, after that, are going to go out and have to explain why we support this budget. Could Hopefully unanimously, but if not, at least what is the opinion of both boards. Could I suggest a um, slight deviation? Next week, the Finance Committee is scheduled for Monday night and Thursday night. Yeah. Monday night, It'll be marathon, but you're scheduled to complete all your department yeah. reviews. And yeah. Thursday was reserved; it was open. It was kind of final deliberation. You could choose to invite the school and have a joint meeting next Thursday night. What time we have school, school, board. Board. school board, but what time do you have your normal? We start at six. six so instead of having our finance, we have a school board finance committee meeting from six to seven before that business meeting. We could do. We could join. Yeah, I don't need to hijack the finance committee process, but it we might can be invite ourselves to, to the check that in. I mean, we were to cancel too because you guys. Why not just come up here and write our process? Can I just tell us here what the schedule works for you? Yeah, we'll let you know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that, so that sounds really so. So you're proposing that's, that's, that's uh, joining meeting. you on the fourth and yeah. fifth. Yes. Well, right. if you think about it, that, 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 that second meeting was to talk about policy. If you guys come in with two seventy with recommendations for an additional two seventy five. There really is no need to have a conversation about policy because we've already really okay. instituted policy changes through your own actions. So I assume that you like what we're proposing to take yes. yep. right. You know, the one thing I wanted to say about this is that um, we, I hope that the recommendations that we're making are sustainable in the sense that next year this becomes the baseline in which we start and we should employ whatever was undertaken to get us to this number by staff in particular, but even the council and school board should automatically happen next year. Um, so that way we don't have to renegotiate because we need to, you know, uh, pan through this problem for the next, you know, probably at least a year, if not two. I'm hoping after one more year that this will um, subside uh, and we've adjusted to it. But, um, you know, the conservativeness needs to be expressed in the future budget, at least one more budget. So, so are we agreeable one hour would be enough to just join them for 6 o'clock? Yeah. Or are we saying that... It should be. Just bring duct tape to put over Chris's nose and we'll be out there in half an hour. Yeah. And hopefully... Respectful dialogue. Yeah. <laughs> so we're saying six to seven. Six to seven. Six to seven. Six to seven. <laughs> okay. I just want to make sure so that I get it down that I know where we're all going. Yep. Or where we all know where we're going. So between now and then, does that give the two of you enough time? Enough time. <laughs> <laughs> I know where they're going directly after here. <laughs> over <Overriding. laughs> <laughs> Yes. 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 So, not to be a process geek, but that's me. Um, I love the coverage too, girl. Those aren't mine. That's mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Although, I am a color person. Mm -hmm. you know. um, again, back to tonight, the school board's meeting. The school board, I think, is what, what we're saying is that the school board tonight will vote on the recommendations of the meeting so far and that we'll have the opportunity on the 4th for this group to get together, talk about further reductions and what that might look like to get to the 3.5%, and then we might be able to even make an amendment proposal at the school board, the, that school board meeting that night as well. Well, you also have, the, don't you have the ultimate, we have to, we have it's a, procedural, but you have to accept what the council does anyway, right? So do you have, have to have that approval? Yeah, that's on the 18th that of May, though. No, no, I understand that, but I'm just saying. But we you, could make just adjustments at that point as well. Right. Yeah. Yes. Right. I mean, there's always, right. there's always a reaction to council action by the school board right. because the council is the one who's finalizing the process. And you have to accept, well, you have to accept that you have to acknowledge that that's the case. Acknowledge and make adjustments as right. needed. So, um, cool. So, with Jody, then tonight, I guess we're going to proceed with the pieces that we have before us right now and that we've already sort of agreed that that's what we want to bring to the school board, and then we'll make additional adjustments next week. So, plan. All right. May the force be with you. Thank you, everybody. One further question. Are you ready to adjourn here? Well, um,
No? I just have one for the first. Uh, we talked last meeting about a second ballot question. Yeah. And I just wanted to get your review and blessing. It's the second one. So, Tom, not to, to jump in, but what, what I was hearing from the attorney this afternoon was I'm that it didn't need to go on the ballot. It does not need to go on the ballot. It doesn't need to go on the ballot. That it, seems absurd to me. Well, it, and that's why I wanted to talk with you in person. I, I guess I misunderstood call that. Call out in the, in the public meeting, but we did have a conference with Drummond Woodson this afternoon about what really the statute means in terms of this extra, um, what we're talking about is if there's any additional subsidy that comes our way, the, the opportunity to allocate that in advance and to plan for it in advance. Um, Bill Stockmeyer, who is the sort of um, legal board process guy at John Ellison, says that Excuse their me. interpretation of the statute is that the vote that is specified, that talk, it talks about a public vote and the public has authorized, in a charter community is actually acknowledged to be the town council. So as long as the town council says, this is what we're doing in their order, in their budget order, then it's considered to be voted upon by the public because we are the representatives of the public. So it would need to be added into the budget order. It would need to be added into the budget order, and in so doing, it could be reported to the voters, but it wouldn't be going into their hands to if be voted upon. Let me ask you, though, if this is our intention, would it not be helpful to tell the voter who's voting on the school budget that these are our intentions? It would be very helpful for them to know that that was our plan, um, and the question is the, the vehicle by which we do so. It doesn't, according to what Bill said a few hours ago, it doesn't have to be a vote that they say yes or no to, but it does have to be presented to them as something that, that is, is a choice that's been made by the council. So, like so the in the notification of the budget where we say, you know, these are the amounts and the categories that we are um, proposing to spend them in, do you approve? At the bottom of that, there would be an, oh, by the way, the town council has authorized that should we receive any additional subsidy after the point of the passage of this budget, this is how we would dispose of those funds. But did they, is there any downside to having it on the ballot? I understand. So is it, it, they say no. Right. It just goes to the fund balance. Of course there is. So. Yeah, I, I think that, that what, um, the, the main point that Bill was making, and correct me if I'm wrong, because mm -hmm. Julie was listening in on this conversation, the main point that he was making was that most of the statutes were written with RSUs in mind or you know, school unions or groups where there is a school board that's an authority over multiple organizations, multiple communities, and so um, there's an understanding, I guess, in the legal community that a municipal charter-based town council organization with a school as a department of that organization is not really held to quite that same process. So where in the statute it says the voters have approved or at an annual budget meeting it's been approved. Um, since we don't have that format for the development of our budget, they just substitute the town council has authorized. The town council has voted on, the town council has approved, and move forward in that way. They also said that the you know, town council sets the referendum in a municipality, that the school board doesn't have to do that. So um, I think it's a question of, of um, Drummond Woodson and working with MMA, trying to tease out the meaning that the legislature intended in the statute and, and it's not really written for us. Yeah, but to some degree, I think that we talked about this previously, we all thought this is as much as sort of a PR, PR move to say, you know, we hear you, it's on there. I mean, to me, there is, there's, I don't see a lot of downside to doing this. I mean, if they vote no, then it all goes to fund balance, which we say that's not necessarily a bad thing either. But I'd rather, I mean, yeah, we can do it, but what you just <laughs> look how long it took you to to <laughs> describe that to us. The average you actually know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, the average person it's gonna they're not gonna see that. So I think there's there's lots of good reasons to do this. I, I, I don't know how but I also the opposite seeing it that way, the opposite holds true for me in that we're just putting a one line question here 
and hoping that the general public understands what this is even talking about. That's what defined does this by statute. Balance mean? We, we, that first question is in statute. We can't change that. No, no, no. But I'm saying we're talking about the second, second. question. The second not question. That's the first question. That's that's the first question. question and unjargonized. Yeah. Yeah. And it's still I tried to make it as simple to understand as possible. But I, but but I think it will have to be on there. It just won't be a question. It will say it's a statement. It's called a fiscal note. No, have agreed. The difference is, and maybe it's. The difference is this appears on the same ballot. Right. What you're talking about would appear on uh, the sheet ancillary posted. information the sheet that's posted. posted outside the door. Probably there's at least two or three pages associated, a lot of numbers. People aren't going to see it on that page. So I'm just observing there may be value of having it right here. So I, I, oh, sorry. No, you were going to go in before. Go ahead. We don't I, need a broad voice. Uh, <laughs> Just to, just to Peter's point, and I think it's more than just a, a PR move, if you will. I think that we are generally saying to our taxpayers that we understand the pressures that you're under. And so if in the event that we do receive additional subsidy, we want you to see that benefit this year and next year. We want to split that benefit over two years. This is how I was understanding our intent. And so I think if the town council makes that decision, we're saying like this aligns to our values and this is why we're making this decision. Where if you put it out to vote, then you're saying to the taxpayer, you decide when when this when yeah. this is available. As opposed to us saying, you know, that's you're the elected officials, the town council, that's that's part of your decision making power, if you will. So I, I didn't I did not support putting this on there. I, I thought it was pretty critical talent. Um, one of the reasons I didn't is because if, if if somebody's not looking at the process and watching what we're doing and they see this, I think maybe in their mind they're thinking, hey, I'm going to get a tax rebate. And if it doesn't come, now we're in a situation where we've said, hey, I was supposed to get some relief and I never got it. I voted for this relief and I didn't get it. So now we have to sit here and explain, well, that you didn't get it because the state didn't do this. It becomes a defensive position now. And, and, and if they vote on this, think, yeah, I'm going to get a tax rebate mm -hmm. instead of the might be able to sort of kind of would be able to. I, that's my concern is that by putting it out there like this and it passes, people automatically assume I'm going to get some kind of tax relief and if it doesn't come, now we're accountable for that. Well, you still have to make the decision of what happens and one of the other things that Bill recommended was that, you know, at the end of this sentence where we have a question mark, you would just put a comma and you would make a note that yeah. if, yeah. if received prior to you know, July 1 or whatever. Well, or whatever. When I, so the tax commitment. Yeah, the date of the tax commitment. Awesome. Is there anything, is there any stricture preventing us from, rather than having it as a yes or no question, just putting a statement right. that the town right. council has agreed right onto the ballot? Right. So that I don't believe that there's any <laughs> allowance for other languages. You can't really like put anything on the ballot. The moral confines of the ballot question. All of these and words are a statutory purpose, I think. Yeah. yeah. I think the word really is But at the only place you can post all sorts of other stuff. But if you can read it and understand it, it's not about it. It's kind of small punish, but in acting, if we have something like this, we put a little sign in the voting booth, in each voting booth, as just one piece of paper at eye, eye level. Can so you do that legal? Tony does put the, the notice of it may not be legal. Legal. In, the, in the voting <laughs> booth. I think they should not. I can't do so them so they want to like putting Goldilocks on. So I, I am completely confused where we are in this conversation. So um, I. I believe that this could be relabeled and just simply noted as a fiscal note and that it re simply the statement be reshaped so it's not a question that tells the town council approved that this and then that's it. I don't agree with having the vote. I think it's going to confuse people because they don't they're understand. They're not going to understand what relief means. They're not going to understand what general fund is. Um, they're not going to understand it. Um, on it. I just, let me rephrase that. There's going to be little um, varying levels of understanding regarding that, and I do agree with Chris. I think it could set us up for a very defensive position when people don't understand the full impact. I think it simply needs to be reshaped as a fiscal note, which is, I believe, I'm pretty positive that it is permissible to be on a ballot and a fiscal note. I, I agree with Sean just saying very simply, like, this money is tax, because it could be that in the end the state's only going to send us $50,000, or maybe they'll send us $500,000. We have no idea Fine. what they're doing. They might send us nothing. You know, I mean, so in the end, to say that there's going to be tax relief, please vote on it, I think we'd be shooting ourselves in the foot. Well, remember, we started this thinking that we had to. 
So, um, you know, Tom's prepared this very carefully under the understanding that this was the only way that we could get this to be done. Right. So it's only this afternoon that we've heard from a different attorney who said, hey, you know what, you don't have to. It's an understanding that it's not part of the process for a municipality with a town council. So, <laughs> and their attorneys and are were geared towards educational that, yeah, that's he, part, and he's I would I would trust his interpretation in that I know that he works closely with MMA and that this is basically his whole area of expertise is you know the procedures for voting. But to um, just like the consensus is not um, see if there's a way to put a statement on the ballot seems to be the consensus. But there does um, need to be an order added to the town council. Yeah, budget amendment order. to your budget order yeah. that would go on yeah. to. That would so I know. That. That. I would approve that. So. 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 Anybody else? Anybody else got anything? Uh, Steve, my public comment, you want to get? Thank you, everybody. Adjourn. Move.